Well, a recent Stanford Medicine study found a single genetic factor in some people could help provide some protection against Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease. Now, in the study, it was found that one in every five people carry a version of that gene. Joining me now to discuss this is Dr. Emmanuel Mignot, professor of sleep medicine at Stanford, and he's also one of the study's senior authors. Pretty incredible. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Tell us about that genetic factor and how it could work to serve as protection from both Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. Thank you, Liz. Uh, yes, so this genetic factor is a genetic factor that controls the way the immune system reacts to bacteria, viruses, but also your internal proteins. It, it explains why some people react strongly to certain immune challenges and not others. And it seems that a specific version of that genes is protective against both Parkinson and Alzheimer, which is a little bit of a surprise because Alzheimer and Parkinson are generally believed to be different disease, have different types of uh, protein aggregates in the brain. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, that was a little bit of a surprise. Does this mean so, that there's some sort of link between the two, between Alzheimer's and Parkinson's, that they may be different, but they may impact the similar people maybe different ways? No, that's exactly it. Uh, so we were a bit baffled initially because why would it be the same factors that's protective? But in fact, there is one particular protein that we know is involved in a lot of different neurodegenerative disorders. That protein is called tau. And uh, we know that there's genetic association with the tau gene in both Parkinson and Alzheimer. So, and then tau is much more nonspecific. You know, for example, if you have head trauma, tau kind of also gets activated. And we know that boxers, you know, they get no degeneration as well, and they also have these tau aggregates. So it seems to be a factor that's a bit less specific. As soon as you have an insult, tau starts to get activated and start to aggregate, and it probably makes all this neurodegenerative disease much worse. And in fact, in Alzheimer, for example, is really when tau goes up that you start to have all the cognitive problems. So we found out that this DR4 seems to bind a very, very specific piece of tau that is critical to producing this abnormal um, features of tau that predispose to this neurodegenerative disease. And it seems that when you have this DR4, you're able to protect yourself against this abnormal form of tau, and that's probably how you are protected. Now, could these findings help eventually lead to a potential vaccine for both Alzheimer's and, and Parkinson's or better treatment? So that's why I think I'm the most excited indeed is that this is a very, very small piece of tau that binds very specifically this genetic factor. And that's the way this immune genetic factor works. It's kind of recognized very specific pieces of protein, and then it mounts an immune response against it. So in theory, it should be easy to just uh, synthesize that pieces of tau and then put it in a vaccine. And people with this DR4 should be able to produce an immune response against it. And if I'm right, this should protect you against Parkinson and Alzheimer. Now, I'm not sure if it would be completely protective. I mean, that mm -hmm. would be too good. But at least I think it could slow down Alzheimer and Parkinson's uh, onset, which yeah. I think is what a lot of people are trying to do now. Oh, okay. uh, for this disease, it would be a little bit like cancer. We, we're not going to cure them at once. I think we'll probably delay their onset and, and be able to, you know, like maybe delay to so that they never have happen to in people that are uh, susceptible. That would be the dream. I know a lot of people could be watching this and wondering, oh my goodness, I want to go get tested to see if I have this gene. And if I don't, maybe I should be doing some preventative measures or go see a doctor. Um, what? How can people get tested for this? I, it's quite easy in my lab, but I, I don't really know. Maybe 23andMe does uh, the genetic variant, but otherwise it's, it's called HLA typing. And you can certainly do it. It's a test that's done for transplantation, for example, uh, or for autoimmune diseases. Um, and uh, again, about 30% of people have this uh, genetic factor. Now, it's very important to realize it's not like it's completely protective. Sure. It actually 
protects partially. And that's actually why we think that a vaccine could be more efficient, because mm -hmm. we have some suggestions that the immune protective effect is not present in everyone. So mm -hmm. that could explain why some people are more protected than others. So maybe with a vaccine, we could boost this immune protective effect in everyone that has DR4, and that would be much more protective. Yeah, I mean, there's not a person I think around that isn't somehow doesn't even know doesn't know somebody that's been impacted by either Parkinson's or Alzheimer's or they themselves have a loved one that suffered through either of those diseases. So this is a huge development. I'm sure it's going to lead to a lot of hopefully it's going to lead to a lot of progress when it comes to treating these two conditions. No, no question. Yeah, I'm very excited about it. And the next step is to do some more experiments in animals to make yes. sure that we can create this vaccine and then go to humans. Dr. Manuel Mignot with Stanford, thank you so much for joining us. It was a real pleasure.